Amen? So when I went to, to this white church, everybody was was uh, interested to have me. And I said, listen, I, I just came here to study. That was a good excuse. So, you know, if you want me to sing a song, I'll sing, but I don't want to minister. I don't want to do anything. I went to the black church. And this church, it was very interesting because my husband had already met the pastor, one of the pastors in this church. So when I went there, I was already known that I'm coming. They knew I'm coming. You know? But nobody spoke a, a word about me. Not one word. I'm going there, I'm thinking, okay, who am I? Not one word. This is this new person. Like we do in church, for example, okay? We have a new person and we introduce them. And then I'm thinking, okay, so do I introduce myself? What do I do? You know, there's not one word. So the whole service, every Sunday, goes on, and I go back home, and I'm talking to the pastor. And the pastor is telling me about the church, and I'm thinking, should I speak or not speak? Again, the same situation. Am I allowed to speak or not speak? Even to discuss these matters with this pastor. Because nobody is recognizing that I'm there. Do you see what I'm trying to say? And I'm thinking, and my, my husband's phoning me, how is it going? I'm thinking, you know, Ahmed, I think if you were here, it would be better for them. Because it's like I'm invisible. You know, I don't exist. And he said, are you sure? Did, did you tell them? I said, the pastor picked me up. You know? Now, I, I'm, I'm saying this just to point out one thing. And it is when God brings something new in the church, not everybody accepts it. It's the same with life. When he brings a new thing in my life, I might not accept it because I'm used to living this way. So I can't change. It's so difficult for me to change. Number one, I was the first white person in that church. You know? Most of those people worked for white people. And they weren't treated very good. So the way they were looking at me, I knew they had some glasses. It was not their fault. But I represented somebody they didn't want to see. One. Two, I was a woman. If I was a man minister, now they had no woman ministering in that church. The women prayed, the women, but there was no woman leader in that church. I will tell you something. Now leadership is something that God, is God's call on your life. Nobody can reject it. Unless God removes it from you. You know? It would be easier for women not to be called into leadership. It's easier because it's a hassle. It's a hassle. You know? Men will accept a woman who is not a leader. But if you are a leader, have a problem. Number one, very few men will marry you. It's true. Who wants a woman to be a leader? If I was a man, I want a woman to serve me. No? So the, this church, this church had a problem. And when I went there, this pastor was sharing with me some things that was happening in the church. And most of the problems revolved around the families. There was a lot of divorce in the families. There was a lot of broken people. In fact, three quarters, I didn't know, but three quarters of that church were divorced. Divorced. And that's what I started to understand. It's not about black and white. It's about how people have been trained to think. The main pastor was not married. The preaching for the women, the preaching was mostly about having children and getting married. If you are not married, it's a problem. And this is something which is, I will expose it. It's not right. If you are not married, there's nothing wrong with you. There might be, there might not be. But Paul says, if you are a minister, and it's better for you to remain unmarried because of the work you have to do. Because if you marry, your devotion will have to split. Now I'm married, and I serve God. I'm not telling you not to marry. But I'm telling you, in some ways, there is deception in the church. That if you're not married, something is wrong. It's not true. Don't believe it. Don't believe it. 
Righteousness doesn't require marriage. In fact, there are many people who are married and they are not happy. It's true. So marriage or no marriage doesn't make a difference. But in this church, it made a difference. And the problem was that they made it like a norm, a Christian norm, to be married. In fact, the pastor that I was talking to, he was divorced twice. It was not his own fault, but he was divorced twice. And he was looking for a wife. And I said to him, why are you looking for a wife? You divorced twice. He said to me, oh, I'm so much under pressure to find a wife. Listen to this. I'm so much under pressure to find a wife. Because if I don't find a wife, the women will not leave me alone. It's true. It happens. It happens. <laughs> so I said to him, I said, uh, so what kind of wife are you looking for? I said to him, oh, he said, you know, this elder suggested this one. This elder suggested this one. This elder suggested, okay. Mm -hmm. So how will you make the, your decision? How will you make your decision? Bank account. <laughs> Bank account. He didn't tell me, but... Then he suggested one woman who was much younger than him. And I said, oh, she's, she's very beautiful. But I said, how will she function in ministry? Are you really a pastor? I said to him one day, I said, I'm, he said, of course I'm a pastor. Of course, I said, but do you have the heart of a pastor? I mean, do you have a heart to serve forever as a pastor? He said, yes, of course. I said, I see you as a pastor. Because the fact that you're divorced twice doesn't Take away your call. I can see that you serve. But your thinking is wrong. Biblically speaking, it's wrong. There's something wrong. I said, have you ever thought about finding a wife who can help you in your ministry? Who can serve the people you serve? He said, well, you know, and this and that. And I said, you're asking the wrong question. You know? Why am I mentioning this story? and? You know, there were many problems in America that I was scratching my head. I kept thinking to myself, wow, what is happening here? You know, there, were, there was a, a group of American women in my town meeting to pray. And then I was invited to this, to this prayer meeting. And there were two women who had just divorced. Christian women who had just divorced. When I sat down and I heard the story of one of the women, I was uh, broken. I really felt broken because she, she told me she came from Mexico. She said, my husband and I ministered in the church together. We did marriage seminars. Marriage seminars. This woman, when she talked, she was shaking. She like this. She couldn't talk. She couldn't even talk. She said, we came from Mexico. He is a lawyer, so he has money. Hmm? I depend on him, my visa depends on him. So as soon as we divorced, because they were going through the world, she said, as soon as we divorced, I not only have a financial problem, I have a visa problem. I will go back to Mexico, people will shame me, not my husband, me, because I'm the woman. She said, and I have three children to keep. She was shaking. I was looking at her and thinking, because I've heard these stories over and over again. And she told me, I never imagined. I said, sister, maybe this is where you know. We never imagine. We never imagine that something can hit us. Because we shelter ourselves and we say, we are this and that's it. We know this and that's it. I said, but you know what? I hear stories and stories and stories, and I say to myself, it can happen to me. So I better be rooted in my faith in Christ that I will not be shaken. Because human beings can change. Now don't get me wrong, I have a happy marriage and I have a, I'm happy with my husband. But this is the world, you know? And we better stand righteous before God because of who we are than because of what we have. Because what we have, we can lose. You understand what I'm trying to say? This is the reverse 
of what we are used to think. I used to be in Bible school and hear very important teachers come and preach. And people would go, he's a man of God. And I say, how do you know? And I grew older. I started becoming tougher. I said, how do you know he's a man of God? I say, look at the thousands. I say, hmm. If I want to know if someone's a man of God, I'll speak to his wife. Yes. I'll speak to his family. You know, I can never say someone is a man of God unless I brush with because I've brushed with people who can function very well in public. But their private life is a mess. And that mess is exposed. It's foolish how Satan deceives us. Satan tries to make us think that we can hide some things and we can, and we can uh, ignore others. The reality is different. One day, the oil, as we say, comes in the surface of the water. That's what Jesus says, those who have ears, let them hear. And we have to hear every time. I said, sister, when you were ministering with your husband, did you ever meet people who had big problems? Said, yes, but I never. She said, Martha, you don't know my husband. Every morning my husband will say, I love you. Every day, every day. There was not one day that my husband left to work without telling me, I love you, I love you, for years. You know, I said, then pray for your husband because he has been deceived. And that is what I saw in the churches was number one, deception. And the Bible deals with deception. It says, love justice, be people of integrity, be honest, do not talk falsehood, do not look at people from the outside, look at people and see what God has done in their life. It's a different, it's a different level of thinking and that's what I want to encourage you today is when you see things coming your way pray but be right before God don't pray and then allow God's word to you know brush it brush it away because it doesn't fit my life this thing that is coming it doesn't fit my life because God is bringing something new in my life and it requires risk but I don't like risk no, risk is not from God. Stability is from God. Poverty is not from God, right? But blessing, financial blessing is from God. But what will you do if you if God asks you to give your finances? You're gonna get poorer. If you give, you will get poorer. No? And what about Jesus saying, go and give everything to the poor? I think Jesus is not blessing us if he makes us poor. You see? So, that is laughing because, yes. Let us accept what God's standards are when we pray. And I don't, I don't want to judge anybody. If I judge, I will judge myself. But the Bible says, the prayer of the righteous. God will hear the prayer of the righteous. Let us, before we pray, when God brings and exposes things in our life, deal with them. Amen? Amen. I want to encourage the sisters here in this church to start talking a bit more, witnessing a bit more, speaking in the church a bit more, ministering in the church, taking their place that God has made for you. You know, God has a call for each and every person in this room. Whether you are young, whether you are old, I don't care how much white hair you have. You can make a competition. <laughs> but God wants us to take that place. God wants his church to shine. These are the end times. And we have to shine for God. There are people who deserve to know about Christ. Let's not look at, am I married or not? Am I a woman or a man? Let's to push these things aside and look at Jesus and what he's calling you to do. Amen? Amen. Let's pray. We thank you, Father God, for this morning. We thank you for your word. We thank you for the sacrifice that you have done for us. We thank you that you have made us righteous, Lord. May you have made us holy. There is no righteousness or holiness 
that comes from us. And Lord, even when we feel good about what we do, but in reality, Lord, we are imperfect and unrighteous. It's just because of your mercy, your grace, your love for us that we have come to this point of privilege that we can call you Abba, Father. That we can come to you as children, that we can be lifted up even to be called priests of the living God. And so we thank you for this, Lord. We ask you to expose those areas in our life where you want us to be right where you want our righteousness to shine, where you want us to take decisions. And Father God, help us to be people of um, integrity, honesty, that we face our weaknesses, that we face our sins, that we repent Lord, from our sins. We thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. And um, Brother Jimmy, you close in prayer? Let us stand up. Let us thank God for His message. And let us ask for the Holy Spirit to do His work in us so that we will live in righteousness. And we will have also a good fellowship with God. Let's pray. Lord Jesus Christ, thank you once again for bringing each one of us in this place. As you want us always to be together so that you will bless us. Thank you for the message that we heard this morning that you, you are the one who makes us righteous and you want us to still keep being righteous. By our own we cannot do because we can see also people in the Bible they were serving you but with a small thing they fail. That's why we want your spirit to dwell in us every time, even though we are weak, but your spirit will strengthen us so that we will continue, we will not get disappointed, but we will still continue serving you in righteousness, living in righteousness, and showing also the light outside. We thank you. We pray for our sister Marcel that you will give her, you will bless her here and you will still give her your word so that she will share with us. We pray for ourselves as we are going back home, protect each one of us. During our days, let your word live in our hearts. We hope that you will be always with us. We pray for those who don't have work, that you will bless them. And those who have work also, you will protect them, and you will also protect their, their, their work. We pray for pastor who are coming, that you will protect him to arrive here safely, and we will thank you for everything you have done in, in, in his life. Thank you, Jesus, for this program. We are going back home. We believe in you, and we want you to still dwell in our hearts, to guide us. We pray for each one, those who are sick, and those who are also well, that you will protect them. We pray for those who could not make it today because of wealth, because of many, many things, that you will be with them, and next time we'll be here together. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Let's share the grace. The love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. May the Lord bless you all. Bless you too.
Need to stop it. I stop it.